Hi guys, thanks for joining me today for this special request by one of my patrons. We're working on a black primed canvas. I just took an old canvas and covered it up with black paint, let it dry, and I'm going to be using a large paintbrush. You can use any large blending brush that you want to work on the background. I'm going to pull into my titanium white and my neon orange. I'm going to make a nice soft peachy color and start pulling my brush back and forth in the center first and then turning my brush the other way to make thinner lines. I'm going to pick up a little bit more orange this time, making some of the streaks in the sky a little bit more colorful than others. Now, with the same brush without washing it, I'm taking my light blue violet or light ultramarine blue, and I'm gonna do the same thing, but starting from the outer sides and edges of the canvas, making some skinnier streaks, pulling right into part of the peach, overlapping those colors slightly, and then making some of the lines skinnier, some of them thicker. So I'm using my brush both ways here, turning it uh, to make wider brush strokes and then making skinnier ones. Now I'm going to pick up a little bit more of my blue paint and pull along the bottom. I've still got a little bit of that peachy color in my brush. And I'm going to make some more of it, just that light peachy color with white and the orange. And then I'm going to go right above the blue and partially over top. And then I'm going to turn my brush sideways or straight up and down and start tapping and stippling in for some trees. Back to my orange with a little bit of white still in my brush. I'm gonna add a little bit of color here, just warming this up right at the base of the trees. And then a little bit more in the sky. And I'm gonna to switch to an angular brush now. Pick up my white, my orange, so with this angular brush, I'm just going to take more of my orange and my white and I'm going to start spreading it through into these streaks, creating a little line, some thinner, some thicker. Um, sometimes I'm going to pick up more of my orange and sometimes it'll be less. So I want a variation of tones in the sky. And this is a really great brush to use for creating uh, the mountain range in this painting as well. So I'll be using it for that. I also like to use an angular brush for um, painting structures like houses and buildings. So I'm just going to go and overlap some of the blue as well. I really like this neon orange in combination with the blue. And now I'm going to take some of my blue with my black and make like a dark uh, charcoal kind of a color. And I'm going to pull some lines down here, some straight, and then some I'm just going to kind of uh, wiggle and make them look a little bit uh, lumpier looking. I'll be coming in and adding some uh, tree trunks. So I'll just be doing some little lines here and there for some tree trunks. They don't all have to be straight up and down. And yeah, here's the little line. Um, at the base of the trees where I kind of made it look uh, a little bit more flowy and like there's little hills almost down there. And then I'm just going to scumble out what's left in my brush kind of above, above these uh, other trees that we stippled in earlier with our large blending brush. Now I'm going to pull in, kind of just slice in with my angle brush into that white and then just start pulling up and down. Just some little lines here and there, some leaning, some of them straight, just randomly uh, for our tree trunks. And then I will be going over with um, some more of the foliage on these trees to make it look like uh, some of the foliage is in front of the tree trunk and the tree trunk is in the back and behind some of the leaves just to make it look more realistic. 
I'm going to come in now with some more of my blue, black, a little bit of orange and white and just kind of make this look a little bit um, sort of messy, messy looking and um, break up those lines a little bit, making it look a little bit more blurred. And I want to soften this up a little bit, so I'm going to do a layer of white and I'm using a thick amount on the edge of my or the end of my brush and I'm just lightly pulling and dragging almost to create that look of um, the shore and maybe some rocks, maybe there's some logs, but it's so far away we can't see, but it's just not all gonna be solid, um, not one solid color, and we're not gonna have um, all straight lines. So we will have one straight line right above the water, and the water's gonna go straight across, of course. I pick up some more of my black now, and I'm going to cut in with a dark line for some contrast here and some shadow. Okay, so what I'm going to do with the leftover black paint in my brush is come in between some of these trees. Uh, creating some more shadows and just a little bit more depth in between so that it looks like um, there's some different layers and it's a bit more 3D. So we'll just kind of push, pull, and wiggle in between some of these areas to create sections uh, that are a little bit darker, give it more depth, and then I'm going to come in and add a few more tree trunks. I've got a liner brush this time that I'm using. So just rolling it in my white. It can be tinted a little bit with that orange as well. And some water. So I'm just gonna go up and down, creating different um, widths or heights and widths and um, angles. So some are gonna be a little bit leaning like I did earlier. So we're just wanting to build this forest up. So it's important to not skip any steps and create all those layers. I'll brush out the rest out into the water for a little highlight. And then I've got this tiny little mop brush. You can use any small brush that you want, even a filbert brush to, to create the treetops here. So I did not get it wet first. I'm just going straight into my paint. I've got my light blue violet and I'm just gonna tap, tap, tap the tops of these trees to give these uh, frosty kind of a look to them. So we'll work our way all the way across to the end of the other side of the canvas, tapping kind of up, then down, making it look random. So they're all different. Now I'm going to blend in a little bit of black to my brush and start another layer right above. And we're going to start going up and over part of the sky color. Remember not to make them all the same height. You want to make it interesting and realistic. So some trees are going to be taller than others. Just try not to bring them up too, too high. Later on, I'm going to um, make this a little bit lower just so that I have enough room for my mountain range. So you can make yours even shorter than what I'm doing right now. Or you can keep them this height as well. It still looks pretty. It doesn't really matter. I was just going by uh, the reference photo that my patron um, supplied me with. I'm just going to start to soften the base of these trees up a little bit. Just with the paint that's left in my brush and maybe some of that white that's really thick there. At the bottom, I'm just going to pick up a little bit of that and blend that in as well. I'm going to go in with a little bit more black for some of the areas here of the trees where I want them to be uh, darker. And then I've got a filbert brush here. Loading it up with titanium white and I'm just going to come right in, just freehand my moon. We're not doing a full moon because the bottom portion of it is going to be covered up with a mountain. So 
so I'm just going to make this as bright as I can. I'll do a couple of layers and if you want to take the time to dry yours off, if it's not drying quickly enough, then you can just use a hair dryer like I do sometimes. And then I'm going to come in and take some yellow, orange, my neon yellow and orange and white. And I'm going to start working on building up the color in the background behind the moon and kind of off to the side. But I'm really saving the yellow um, in this painting for the moon. It's going to be a very bright, bright moon tinted with that neon yellow. So I'm just going to keep adding to the sky for a little bit and then I'm going to go over with another fresh coat of titanium white over the moon. So three or four coats, whatever it takes to get that nice bright base. Remember we are painting on a black canvas here, so it may take a, a little bit more than usual to get that bright white base. And remember not to worry too much about the bottom of the, the moon because we're going to be covering it up with some mountains. Now I'm going to take some more of my white and my light blue violet and start to build up more of a glow just right above these trees it's okay if you go over part of them i'm going to be going over them anyways and um, adding those treetops again um, so don't worry at all if you accidentally go over them um, what you do want to make sure of is that your treetops are dry first because we're trying to add light right now and some, yeah some light like behind those trees so you want your brush to be clean you want the paint to be clean and bright you don't want to mix in any of that black so i'm just adding a few more lines and light and shadow down here below and then i'm going to make sure my brush is clean and dry and i'll just blend out that light that i added behind the trees and above them now i've got an angle brush that i'm going back to and because i'm i'm using this one because i'm going to be adding my mountain range with it so I'm just going to pull and scumble this out a, a little bit to get it um, blended and then with the leftover paint in my brush that I used or that I just scumbled around, I'm just going to tap into those treetops with. And before I start the mountain range, I just want to add another layer of blue, <clears throat> excuse me, another layer of blue for these streaks in the sky. So pulling and flicking and dragging with my brush no water just straight paint for this Okay, so I'm going to wash that brush off and then switch over to my filbert brush again. I'm going to take a scoop of my neon yellow and I'm going to go right over the moon that's just about all dry now. It's definitely okay. In fact, you will want to be adding a little bit of white so it's not so, so bright. Um, so I'm going to be adding a little bit of white to this throughout the video. And I'm just going to go in, cut around here. Now the out, there's going to be a very, very thin 
outline of this moon that I'll be adding a little bit later. I'm going to use my blue violet and a little bit of the orange watered down to just do a very, very thin um, outline that will help make it pop out and glow even more. I took just a little bit of my orange and my white there and blended it in slightly with the yellow just in case the yellow dries and looks a little bit green on the on the green side so neon yellow cool um, can can do that sometimes especially if we've got some blue in the painting and a black um, underpainting as well okay so I'm gonna let that sit for a little bit and start adding a little bit more color and cut around and start working on the outline here. So first I'm just using my neon orange with just a little bit of white in my brush. And of course it's up to you how much color you wanna to add to your sky and your moon. You can make it even lighter and softer than this if you want, just by adding some more white to each of your colors. And I'm just going inside some of these warmer areas with a little bit more white at times, making some of them softer looking, softer in tone. And then other other areas, um, like I mentioned earlier, I want there to be a little bit more uh, color and saturation. So we've got a little bit of both. Okay, now I'm gonna come back in with my filbert, a little bit of blue, orange, some water, make it kind of makes like a grayish color and I'm just going to go around and do a very thin thin line and some of the areas are a little bit thicker than I wanted so I'm going to um, scumble off take off some of the paint and then I'll wipe it off on my towel so right in here I'm just going to wipe that off on my towel go back push carefully right up to the edge and then just keep going back and doing this so I take that paint off wipe it off on the towel and then just go right back to it so this will only work if it's still wet so right as soon as you apply it you can work with it and manipulate it so now I've got some white again I want to add a little bit of this over my moon because some areas are just a little bit too too neon yellow for my liking so I want to make this glow a little bit more but not that really bright bright yellow um, and then I'm gonna add a little bit of that down below a little bit more of my white just for a bit of a reflection and ripple in the water okay I've got another angular brush now this one's a size smaller than what we were using before just choose your brush sizes according to the size of canvas that you're working on, guys. I'm going to mix up my blue and my black to make a nice uh, bluey gray color here. And I'm going to start coming in with my mountain range. So using an angular brush is really easy and very helpful. You can use a flat brush for this too. You just want to kind of pull, drag, wiggle making some of the tops of your mountains look softer or rounder and then others pointy and edgier. I'm gonna fill the top in with the blue and then it's gonna get lighter and lighter towards the top of the, the black, the treetops, the black treetops. So we'll have a dark grayish outline, fill it in with the blue and then just soften as much as you can less paint just wiggling it out until you get that to that bright area that's right above the trees and if you accidentally make it too dark you can just go back in with a little bit of white to uh, lighten it and get the color that you want so we're bringing those mountains right over part of the moon bringing those closer to us and setting that moon back further So I'm going to come in with a little bit of white here just because I have a lot of paint there and I want to make this look very soft and glowing right above and behind those trees. 
and then I'll just gently blend them into one another. Back to my blue and black, more black here than blue. I'm going to outline these mountains, giving them more of a darker outline here. So I'll outline them and then I'm just going to soften and blend around a little bit more. Okay, so after blending that out, I like that softness and I like the color tone I have going on there. I'm going to wash my brush out and I'm going to take more of my white, my blue, and even a little bit of that orange in there. <clears throat> and I just want to go over the tops of my trees um, and just push them down a little bit lower. So I'm just going to go right over top of them. And they're dry, so I'm able to do this. I'm going to pick up a little bit more white to make sure that I get a good coverage here just kind of pushing and wiggling up and down and then I'm going to go across and blend it out with my brush. So right here just kind of pulling and blending softly making it sort of disappear into those mountains so it looks like fog or something or clouds, low clouds back there. And I'm going to go right over top here. I could have just left it, it looked nice, but I really want to go by the reference photo that I'm using. Um, and the mountains were a little bit taller than the trees, so, uh, but def definitely um, make them the height that you want. You don't have to worry about that. And then I'm going to come back in and add some treetops again. So just back into my black and blue, but more black than blue on my brush. So I'll just tap, 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 making some of them a little bit taller than others. Okay, so after working a bit more on the tops of these trees and retapping them in, I'm going to also come down in between some of the trees at the base again here with some more of my um, black, just adding a little bit more shadow in there like I did earlier. And just going to tap in here a little bit more. And then I'm going to be focusing on the sky again, the rays and also or the streaks in the sky the light and the shadow parts i'll be adding a little bit um, over top in front of the moon and i'll show you exactly how i do that in just a minute it's going to take a little bit of layering but it's really really easy and this painting i should mention is is a uh, you know really doable for all skill levels i try to make all of my tutorials like that and even like if you come to one of my classes I teach um, every student the same lesson, no matter what skill level they're at. You just paint it at your own ability. And by doing something that you don't think you're quite ready for actually makes you a better painter quicker. So that's the only way you're going to get better faster is by doing something out of your comfort zone. Um, that's how you have to learn. You have to do something that um, you're not necessarily thinking that you're ready for. Um, so that's just... Uh, a little tip there for you guys try something out of your comfort zone and you might surprise yourself so i'm just going to start blow drying this off and at the same time i'm drying this off i'm going to use my brush and i'm going to bring in a little bit of that yellow with my white and i'm going to shape around the side here a little bit pulling in some more of my orange all at the same time uh, and drying it off at the same time here
So I'm gonna go back into my white and with just a little bit of orange here. And I'm gonna start to go over the moon a little bit in some areas here, just a few little patches. So we'll just kind of dab, pull and drag, and then right into a little bit of my blue violet and just dabbing a little bit over top. I'm gonna go cut around the moon again. Pull out a few more lines. Work out a little bit more paint out of my brush into that blue, kind of blending the peachy color out of my brush with a bit more of that blue. And it's a really nice color when it, it's combined because the orange is kind of more on the cool side when it's mixed with the blue, it can dry looking like um, sort of a pinky violety color. You won't get brown when you mix the two. These two, for some reason, they just make a really nice color. So now I've got that those two colors there. It's time to scumble off some of the paint. This will leave a perfect shade and layer underneath. So by pushing off, scumbling some of this paint off, we're gonna expose that light yellow and white again on the moon. We're just gonna leave a few little patches there. And then I'm gonna go back in and just tap in a little bit more of my yellow. So remember you guys can create yours um, any color that you want. If you want yours to be the really bright, bright yellow, if you want yours to have more of a peachy tone to it or just full on white, um, this is just how I wanted to create mine and the steps I took to uh, build it up like this. But you guys can do whatever you want with yours. I'm just here to inspire you guys and guide you along if you want to follow my steps. So just adding a little bit more color here now. So I wanna go over some of the areas with a little bit more white after, like right above um, the mountains on the moon. I want it to be brighter there, but I'll, I'll do that a little bit later. Back into my orange. I'm gonna come right in here. Just saturate this a little bit more. I love this orange in combination with the blue I think they're very complementary colors they work really well together and that's what kind of drew me to this photo um, that was sent to me I knew right away I wanted to do it and I'm kind of late doing this but I had so many requests and I still have three or four to get through I'm enjoying them all uh, of course Christmas time we're in December right now and I've been um, a little occupied are preoccupied with doing my Christmas and winter um, theme tutorials. I love winter and Christmas, so I've been really into the Christmas spirit lately and um, painting quite a bit of those for you guys. I hope you've been enjoying them. And here I'm just coming in with a little bit more yellow and white just to define that shape a little bit better. I just wanted to make it a little bit more round. So right here, I'm coming in with a little bit more white over top of that yellow to make it a little bit brighter. And I might add a little bit more white later on too. So we've got a lot of that peachy color back there. Now it's time to come in with some more blue and balance that out. So really I'm just defining my lights and shadows here and I'm just about done this painting. So I hope you guys have been enjoying these tutorials and I want to really thank you guys for all of your support here on Patreon. It's such a pleasure to um, talk one-on-one -on -one with you guys and I'm trying to uh, answer my messages that you guys send me um, as soon as possible and um, <laughs> there's just a lot going on right now so if I don't get to you right away I haven't forgotten about you I will get to you I just have so many different things going on right now 
but I uh, want to thank you guys so much for being here, all your support. I hope you and your, ha your family have a wonderful Christmas and um, all the best for 2021. And I'm probably going to see you or talk to you again before then. I've got a few more tutorials up my sleeve. So I'll see you later, guys. Have a wonderful day and happy painting. Bye.